Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Isaac Hernandez and today I'm going to show you my favorite five scripts, things, actions that I like to use in Reaper. Of course, you're going to need the SWS extension, but other than that, let's get going. I'm also going to leave all the links to repositories and threads below in the description so you're ready to go. Number one is the global startup action. If you tend to use the same scripts, plugins or instruments for your projects you don't need to waste your time whenever you create a new project create a custom action instead so let's follow this you're gonna go to the action menu show action list and click add new action new custom action so on the left you have a list of actions and scripts and on the right you just drag them in the order that you want and then you're gonna name your action here on top I labeled my custom action startup Isaac and in it I have two scripts the real launcher and global sampler then you right click your custom action and click copy selected action command ID then you're gonna go to extension startup actions and then set global startup action and then in it you're gonna paste the command ID that you copied previously click OK and you're good to go and now every time that I open up Reaper Real Launcher comes up and the global sampler is already set here in the back. I also have a button for Real Launcher in my toolbar right over here so it comes up but we'll get more into that later on. The great thing about this is that you can keep adding actions as your needs change. At the moment I only need these two scripts, I like to keep it simple and not add too much right away but I feel like this is going to start changing little by little so you always go back to that custom action and add whatever you need. Now speaking of Real Launcher that leads me to number two the real launcher script. To be honest with you, I don't even remember what Reaper's default startup window looks like. As soon as I found out about real launcher, I knew I needed it. Number one, it just looks better. It's clean, it's straightforward. You have your options on the right. Mostly I'm using new project, new tab, the load options. Once in a while, I'll click the locate in explorer in case I move something around. At the top, it defaults to recent projects. Most of the time, I'm opening everything from here but I also have my project templates and track templates here just in case I need them. If you don't have Real Launcher yet, you need to get it ASAP. Number three on the list is one click track templates. I've set up a new toolbar just to get these buttons in and that's over here. So when I click one of these, it automatically loads one of my track templates. So let me show you how I set this up. If you have a set of plugins or virtual instruments that you use often, create a track template by creating a new track and then in it, you're gonna load in any VST or plugin that you need. So for example, let's use uh, Guitar Rig 6 here. Then you're gonna right click the track and save track as track template. You're gonna label it. As you see here, I have other track templates already going. Then you're gonna go to extensions, resources, and here you have slots of track templates. So for example, I have one for my VU meter, one for guitar rig, battery four, superior drummer, and massive X. I then right click my toolbar, click customize toolbar, and I click add. From here, I'm going to look for import track, and it's these guys right here. So those are the slots that I have right now, and each one has a different instrument or set of chains that I want. I then add it and just assign an icon to it. So now I can save clicks by just clicking this icon again and then boom, my chain is already locked in. Also, if you have specific settings for any plugin, those also get saved. For example, I always like to start with this tone, an AC model and a solid EQ, the VC76, that all gets saved into it. So every time I start with the same tone. So you don't have to sift through any menus, you don't have to reset everything or start from scratch. Save yourself the clicks and just start creating right away. And this leads me to my next script, the quick add. This script was inspired by the Finder feature from Mac. The action is called the quick add and it's by Neutronic. I set my shortcut on Windows for enter. So when I click enter, I get this menu, this pop-up menu. And here I can look up any VST that I need. Of course, it pulls it in record time. And this feature is just a workflow game changer. You don't have to click on a track on the FX button. You don't have to navigate through menus anymore, especially if you know what you want, just find it, plug it in. Especially if you have Repack installed, there is a lot of things to navigate through. This is gonna make things much quicker for you. And in retrospect, this way of navigating through menus, it gets really clunky, especially when you start to populate your list. And the last on my list is the VU meter. Technically, this isn't a script. It's uh, more of a plugin. 
Korean, I guess, but I use it so often I just needed to add it to this list. So it was developed by the almighty Tukon Studios, and I could do an entire video just on that guy's plugins, and probably more. The homie has put out for the community, again, all for free. It's incredible. Okay, for the VU meter, my project always loads with the MCP meter and the console meter on the master track. I, I then right click on the master track and I make sure that this is checked off. Show embedded UI in MCP. That way I'll be able to see this every time. And I have a track template here in my custom toolbar so that when I create a new track, it has an MCP meter, again, always visible here, and it gets sent to the console meter over here in case I need it. This way I can check levels before I record without having to open the plugin. This is not something um, as straightforward as it seems. Levels wasn't something I thought too much of when I was starting to record until I started learning more about mixing and then I realized I needed to improve the way I was monitoring levels, the way I was recording in order to get the best sound possible. And for that, this VU meter was a game changer for me. So that's my list. I just have one bonus tip for you. And this is just my parting advice. If you're new to Reaper, I would suggest not to start customizing right off the bat. Keep your eye on the ball make music, that's what Reaper is for. I didn't start customizing until about a year in, and even then I kept it pretty light. Reaper is a deep, deep program, and it takes some time, especially if you're new to music production. As you develop habits and a workflow, your needs will start to reveal themselves. The pitfall with customization is that you risk getting sucked into this hole trying to make Reaper perfect when you should be perfecting your craft. That's my two cents, good luck, See you on the next one.